Good morning. I'm Pastor Cheryl Taylor, and in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I welcome you to this Easter morning service of worship at First Presbyterian Church of Rockwall. I invite you to hear now these words of resurrection promise from the 31st chapter of the book of Jeremiah. The Lord proclaims, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. As Israel searched for a place of rest, the Lord appeared to them from a distance. I have loved you with a love that lasts forever. And so with unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Again, I will build you up and you will be rebuilt, Virgin Israel. Again, you will play your tambourines and dance with joy. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. Farmers will plant and then enjoy the harvests. I want to thank you for choosing to worship with us on this Easter morning. I have a few announcements before we start worship. We are going to be singing two hymns this morning, one immediately following these announcements, and that's Jesus Christ is Risen Today, and Thine is the Glory will be sung immediately following the sermon. We have emailed out PDFs of those hymns to those on our distribution list, and we've also posted those PDFs on our Facebook page, so I hope you'll be prepared and sing along with us for those. We are going to be closing the service today with the Hallelujah Chorus, which will be played by Dan Vaughn, our Director of Music. We did not post that, but I know that lots of you know that by heart, and I hope you'll be singing along in your homes as well. Today we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper virtually, so I hope you've gathered together the bread and juice of your choice so that we can all celebrate the sacrament and share in it together. And I hope that you'll take a picture of yourselves and your elements and post those on our Facebook comments feed during the service so we can all see who we're worshiping with today. And it's always good to see your smiling faces. I've been told that some of you may be having problems with stuttering or hang-ups on our Facebook Live feed. If that's bothering you, if it's a distraction, know that we always post a high-definition video of the service in the afternoon each Sunday on our YouTube channel. So feel free to watch that instead or in addition to. Finally, it takes a village. It takes a church to bring worship to you each and every Sunday. And I hope that you all will take the opportunity to thank Mary Henderson and David Gordon, who have been here for every service, making sure that the AV works under the tutelage of a good friend of the congregation, Todd Griffith. I thank all three of you for making worship possible this Easter Sunday morning. And now, breathe in the Spirit's presence. Let us worship God.
today marks a change in the liturgical season from the waiting of Lent to the fulfillment of Easter. Note that the colors have changed from purple to white. And today we also start a new series of worship for this season called The Heart of the Matter. After the events of Holy Week, the disciples were devastated. They were in the midst of full-blown grief and disbelief. Into the heart of that grief came a stunning revelation that life had overcome death. Love had won out over violence. God's faithfulness would build them up once again. God's love will bind them together. Can this be possible in our lives? Today's worship will say, yes, yes it can. Come and see, live and love. The heart of the matter is this, Jesus Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Our prayer for illumination today is drawn from the words of Jeremiah that opened worship. Will you pray with me? God of new dawns, new awakenings, new life, we hear your voice this morning saying, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. On this Easter day, you tell us that we will be rebuilt and made new. In gratitude, we hear you, living God, and we believe you. And so we will celebrate the gift of new life in Christ, even in the midst of fear, as we hear your word read and proclaimed. You give us eyes to see through tears, songs to sing with throats tight with emotion. We know you help the weary rise up out of the ashes. Give us the courage to be your light and hope in this world today. Amen. In the account of the resurrection from the gospel according to Matthew, after the stone is rolled away, the angel comes and sits on top of the stone and gives the women this message. Do not be afraid. Throughout the season of Easter, we're going to invite you to create your own worry stones, which is a stone that you carry around and you can rub on it when you're feeling anxious or fearful. We encourage you to find a stone and draw or paint a heart on it. You can make it as elaborate or as simple as you like. Let it remind you of the angel's message, which Jesus then repeats, do not be afraid. Now, hear this wonderful good news from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came back and rolled the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Easter has always been my favorite holiday. Even today, as we celebrate a very different kind of Easter, I can still say, honestly, I just love it. More than Christmas, more than birthdays, and it's not just because, as a child, I believe that I saw the Easter Bunny hiding eggs around our house. Although, to be fair, no one has come up with a better explanation than the lar for what the large white creature was that I saw hopping around our house as a five-year-old whose eyes were full of sleep. So this past week, I've been wondering, what is it that makes Easter special? It's not the candy that fills baskets and eggs. You get candy at Christmas in your stocking, and you know, let's face it, I don't really need candy anymore. And Easter doesn't bring with it the presents that you get for the other two holidays. And then I realized something. Most of the joy in Christmas and in birthdays comes in their anticipation. Anticipation that comes to a peak on those special days. And then, if we're honest, it's kind of like coming down from a mountaintop experience. But Easter, Easter is different. We look toward Easter through the hard lens of the season of Lent. And when we get to this shining moment, we realize the truth. Easter isn't about today. Easter is about tomorrow. The heart of Easter is hope. I need hope more this Easter than I ever have before, and I'm sure many of you are feeling the same way, which is why I started today's worship with the first verses of chapter 31 of Jeremiah. Now, I know that Easter is all about Jesus, and I promise you we'll get to the gospel in a minute, but for now, just bear with me. From Jeremiah, one of the gloomiest of prophets, we see a vision of hope for a people whose daily reality had been radically changed. Babylon had come, they'd raided Israel, they'd killed the king and his sons, and they'd carted the people off to exile. An exile that seemed to have no end in sight. But there, even in the midst of the wilderness, the people are offered grace. Not because of who they are, but because of who God is. Because God has loved them with an everlasting love, that steadfast, faithful love that scripture speaks to again and again and again. The people are reminded that because of God's love, they will be built up again. They will dance again. They will work again. And they will enjoy life again. God's love makes resurrection, new life possible. God's love will turn their mourning into dancing because exile is not the end of today's story, of Israel's story today. Just as shelter in place is not the end of our story. Just as death was not the end of Jesus's story. Scholar John Hobart writes, Easter is about the absurd announcement that there is no death so dead that God cannot find life in it. That's what those faithful women learned at the tomb that early Sunday morning so long ago. Remember, they were there at the end. They were the full witnesses to the crucifixion. They knew what death looked like, and yet, out of that dismal reality, God offered hope in the form of new life for Jesus and for us. The ancient mystery of faith is this. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we live somewhere in between the second and the third of those statements. We believe that Christ is risen, but we remain like the Israelites in the wilderness of this world until he comes again. So what do we do with this in-between time? We remember that God loves us with an everlasting love, a love that is as present with us today as it was a month ago before we entered our own time of exile. And we trust that God's love will bring us through this in-between time into new life. So while we navigate the not now and yet not tomorrow. We remember that we are, as Jesus said, Christ's brothers and sisters. We're family, just like those first believers who experienced the birth of the church on Pentecost. 
and we follow the example of those first followers of Jesus as we care for one another, checking in on the fragile and the lonely, but maintaining distance for the good of all, as we share with others, for there are so many in need, as we worship from our own homes, even though we can't be together, we are together, as we break bread and drink from the cup, even across the miles, as we study the word in small groups online, as we sing of hope in a world that desperately needs both song and hope. In doing these things, we celebrate our God and we bear witness to our God's triumphant love, just as Jeremiah encouraged the Israelites to do, just as those women did as they stopped in their tracks and fell down at Jesus' feet before running to tell the others the good news of great hope. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hope. Hope. That's why I love Easter. Today, we, just like those women who are, when, they stole was, when the stone was rolled away, we have feelings of fear coupled with great joy. We fear a virus that has changed our reality and threatens lives. But that must not keep us from celebrating with great joy. For on this day, we enter a season of hope. Easter is the start of a new day. In fact, the word Easter comes from the old Latin for dawn. Easter isn't the culmination of anticipation, but the beginning, as we rejoice that the one who loved us enough to die and rise for us will return. We're able to anticipate that coming with confidence because we hold a great truth in our hearts a truth that we're called to share with everyone, the truth that God continues to love the world with an everlasting love, a boundless love that not even death can contain, a faithful love that will carry us through this in-between time, a joyous love made manifest in the great gift of Easter, hope. I hope for the day when you and I and all of us will be able to see one another face to face. But until that day, may you know hope through the love of God made manifest in the resurrection of our risen Savior, our brother, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Easter is a celebration of the grace that we receive in Jesus Christ, and that grace is a free gift. In return, we're given the opportunity to pay that forward in grateful action. I invite you to take the next moment to reflect on the grace that you've received and the ways God is calling you to respond in gratitude. How can you make a difference? No, if you choose to respond by being a part of the work of this congregation, the screen will detail how you can provide your support. Know that ministry continues in this time, not only worship, but teaching, small groups, pastoral care, support for young families with children, and mission giving that is helping others in God's world during this very difficult time. Know that we are grateful for you and for the opportunity to be church together, ensuring that all people feel the steadfast, everlasting love of God so that they could go forth to be that love for others. The heart of the matter is this, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Easter proves that not even death can separate us. And as we gather today around this table, not my table, not this church's table, not a Presbyterian table, but the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we gather in homes and apartments near and far to receive the sacrament today, we prove that not even a worldwide pandemic can separate us from God's love. Everyone, everyone is invited to come, to taste, to share the bread and the cup together. And trust this, no matter whether you're eating bread or crackers, whether you're drinking juice or wine, our risen Lord unites us in true communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with you, O glorious Lord, and the Word was you. On this day of resurrection, we remember that you created all things. You created humanity in your own image for right and intimate relationship with you. And yet, we yielded to temptation. We turned away, we followed lesser lights, which is why we come before you this day, confessing that we have taken the wrong path, confused things that pass away with things eternal, treated others as less than who they are, your beloved children, through our action and our inaction. But on this day of Easter, we rejoice that you do not leave us to linger in the realm of the dead. No, even though we are sinners, you came to earth, teaching, healing, saving us from ourselves, giving up your own life to show us the height and breadth and depth of your love, love that moves us out of the darkness into the light of the resurrection. May your spirit move in our midst this day, binding us together across the miles into the very body of your son, Jesus, our Messiah. May this bread and cup shared today be for us the comfort and strength we need 
to live and love as people of the light. Resurrect us, we pray, to your service, that we may not be afraid, but may instead know the great joy and hope of trusting in our risen Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest and betrayal, was at table with his disciples, and at that meal he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this bread is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the meal, he took the cup. Again, he gave God thanks and praise, and he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, do this in remembrance of me. My friends, each and every time that we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again in glory. These are truly the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you now to eat from the bread of life. and to drink from the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me as we pray together using the words that our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you as we come to the end of this service, to share the peace of Christ with one another by putting a greeting in the comments section of Facebook during the, the postlude. Remember, even though we can't be together, even though we can't hug and we can't shake hands, we can always share the peace of our living Lord with one another. Now, let us bless one another for the journey by using a prayer that we will use to close each service of worship during the season of Easter. I invite you to repeat after me. We know Jesus is present among us. Even in this very home. We will not, fear, let, we will not let fear be louder than love. But with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise. For we are Easter people. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and in all the days to come. Go in peace to love and serve our risen Lord. Happy Easter. Thank you.